Today we'll be going over Darnay Holmes, the Giants' fourth-round pick, cornerback out of UCL, UCLA. He was pick number 110 overall, I believe it was. So uh, keep in mind, he was playing injured during most of this 2019 season. I think all of it, man, maybe not at the tail end, but he did have an ankle injury in like late August, early September, I believe it was. So he was probably a bit hindered by that. He did have some ups and downs in this game, and this is the only game on YouTube that showed a game of his that had every snap. So this is what we're going to go off of. Uh, Washington State, I mean, they are ranked 19. I do like their quarterback, Anthony Gordon. He's kind of like a poor man's Drew Locke from what I saw, but um, it's still a decent competition level. So Darnay is on top of the screen here. His receiver, um, he's guarding a, on a, a drag route down here. Linebacker makes a good play. I mean, just Anthony Gordon makes a terrible decision here, throwing an interception. But Darnay Holmes will look at him specifically. I mean, right here, the, the receiver gets some decent separation. You kind of see Darnay kind of cheating to the outside here. I mean, that's, that's a good move. you got to try and take away the outside, of course. Force him inside, which of course is where his route was going. And he's, he's trailing here by a yard or so, but the recovery was pretty nice. The receiver kind of pauses around this area. You will see it kind of pauses there for a little bit. Darnay has enough time to catch up. And, you know, of course, the linebackers here to make an interception. But Darnay was in great position by this point when the ball is released to make a play on the ball. I mean, he probably wouldn't have intercepted it, but he definitely could have knocked this pass away. I mean, maybe it would have been a catch for three yards at most and it would have moved the chains. But yeah, still, I think Darnay was in a good position there to make a play on that if his linebacker wasn't there. It's a terrible decision by the quarterback there, but I think Darnay Holmes right here showed some good recovery speed and the ability to make a play on the ball if his linebacker wasn't there. So here he is, top of the screen once again. I'll just let this play real quick. It was a pretty nice tackle. He did gain like nine yards on this play, but, you know, there's many times I've seen cornerbacks miss tackles in this situation as his other defender came over to help him there, but the tackling technique was not too bad, honestly. I think this was a cover three, if I looked at it correctly. So it looks like he was dropping. It looks like this corner or safety, I think it is. Safety's dropping back. He's dropping back, and it looks like Darnay was going to drop back as well, which is, you know, the reason he had so much space here. This linebacker was moving over because basically there's four receivers on this side of the field so that's natural and Darnay was kind of by himself over here for a little bit and he had to make this tackle I mean I wish he was a bit more aggressive on it but you watch him the instincts here are pretty good so we'll see Gordon releases the ball like right at this point and Darnay just like you know makes it makes a jump on that and you know it's it's not terrible it's definitely pretty good technique I would say as I said I've, I've seen cornerbacks miss this tackle many times so to see him make it at such a young age and stuff I know it's against college competition but if you're doing it in college that's definitely a step in the right direction so this is a, a similar route concept to the first play we saw and Darnay's on top of the screen once again. He's like eight yards off his man here. So this is tough because his man once again is going to run a drag route. Kind of just like parallel with the uh, first down marker. It's a second and two. And Darnay actually unfortunately missed a tackle on this play. It wasn't the worst thing in the world because you could see here all his momentum is going one way. And receiver just like, kind of cuts on a dime. And, uh, you know, it's only like a three-yard game basically. So uh, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, you could argue that Darnay could have had a better angle here and tried to close in sooner. But if you do that, then you might lose your angle, you know, down here when the receiver tries to turn up field. So I, I understand why he was so far off there. But, you know, at this point in the NFL, you have to make this tackle. You would love at this point if he can somehow stop him short of the sticks and force a, a third and short. Unfortunately, that's not what happened. And as I said, this guy's playing on a bad ankle. This is a tough tackle to make for sure. Just all your momentum's going one way and the receiver just cuts very nicely. So uh, I'm not going to get on too much about that play. But, you know, in the NFL, you got to make uh, – you know tackles in situations like that so Darnay once again top of the screen is going to be in zone defense here so it's not really his fault that the completion was made the receiver kind of just found the open spot in the zone here sits down makes the catch but Darnay lays out a pretty big hit here I just wanted to include this I was pretty encouraged by this we'll watch it a few times I mean the, the guy's only like 5'10 I think it is and you know probably weighs I don't even know if he's 200 pounds you know, maybe close to that but uh to lay out hits like that's pretty impressive in my opinion I mean you know slot corners in the NFL are not known for big hitters but if he can do that I do like his tackling technique I mean yeah of course Darnay Holmes will miss some tackles just like anybody but for the most part he is pretty consistent with stuff like this and if you can wrap up and drive a guy into the ground like that it's definitely a good sign so Darnay is going to be in man coverage on top of the screen here and this is why you know it, it's very tough to be 5'10 and play on the outside especially in the NFL I know this is only college but in the NFL especially um, his his height kind of hurts him here so he's beat off the line a bit I mean he tries to press him I guess and doesn't really you know do a great job at it but this is a perfectly thrown ball I have to include that as well I mean this had to be in a, a perfect position I don't think Darnay was in the worst 
plays. I, I kind of wish he was a bit more stride for stride. Obviously, he's only like a step behind them. But, you know, this ball, unless it's somewhere like over here where the receiver can extend for it, Darnay has like, you know, the – you know the, the hops, I guess, to make a play on this ball and and the instincts to make it. I like I love how he gets his head turned around. That is awesome. So he's not just focused on like you know watching the receiver's back basically or his eyes. He has his own eyes on the ball, which is awesome. And he's still keeping up with the receiver. Unfortunately, that ball is just in the most perfect of spots. So I, I cannot get mad at someone who's five ten and, and guarding someone that looks probably you know four or five inches taller than him, um, at least you know. So that's that's just a very great throw, and he was beat off the line of bit here but uh, I think for the most part technique wise it is pretty encouraging that he got his head turned around very nicely I mean really off the line here I guess the press coverage wasn't that great I mean it, it could have been better but um, he tries to hit him here with his right arm I guess there's some you know some arm battling going on right there but I would say the receiver definitely won that battle and of course Anthony Gordon makes a uh, pinpoint accurate throw so it wasn't the worst rep in the world but I guess there could be some improvements with you know the uh, the hand checking and stuff in the beginning here but that's the only negative I have I think turning his head there is a great sign and uh, I like what I saw there so we're like always told Darney Holmes never played in the slot I mean I of course he's had some snaps in college where he was in the slot just I guess by default and here he is right here so I mean I guess this is considered the slot because there's an outside receiver here outside receiver here I guess this is a slot receiver and this is a slot receiver so Darnay's here this ball isn't targeted his way but I was a bit concerned with kind of how you know, the first few steps of this route went and Darnay kind of got fooled here. Receiver acts like he's going to go outside and just kind of makes like a jump cut here. And Darnay kind of goes for it and doesn't grab him, which is a good thing. I mean, I, I, it is within five yards, but you cannot hold somebody, you know, like that. It's definitely a penalty. But the recovery here is good. He's basically stride for stride at that point. The beginning of this for Darnay wasn't too pretty, you know, to say the least, but the recovery right about here is a good thing. So, I mean, like he, I guess Gordon could have fit a ball there if possible, but it's not like Darnay got blown off the line there. You know, it was it was a pretty good job of recovering by him. We've seen a couple instances now where he is good at recovering. He is a fast guy. I forget what his 40 time is, but he is a fast guy. So, you know, he was beat right here at this moment right here, but, you know, he catches up very nicely right there. And, you know, the receiver easily could have been wide open right there, but Darnay Holmes' his recovery speed right right there, um, you know, made that ball go in a different direction. So this play was not a good showing by Darnay on the bottom of the screen now. So I'll just let it play for you guys. He just did not do a good job with his hands here. I kind of wish he was a bit more handy. Sometimes, you know, with college prospects, it's like sometimes they're too handy, sometimes they're not. And I think in an instance like this, I mean, I don't know what the rule is in college. I know in the NFL, you're allowed to make, you know, contact within the first five yards. But right here, this route, I mean, I guess Darnay was trying to, like, run the route for him, which I've seen him do before. I think he did one on the kill Harry, the, uh, you know, former first-round pick of the Patriots, and ran a slant route that, you know, he was anticipating and basically intercepted that pass and made a great play. I don't know what he was trying to do here. He might have been anticipating an inside route because right here, I guess the receiver should him as well you see him basically just kind of fall to the inside here and giving this receiver all the leverage to the outside towards the sideline and Gordon uh, makes a really good throw here and you know had to put it in the right spot but he did have a couple steps on uh, Holmes so I, I can't really say it was you know all the quarterback there but you know Holmes has to do a better job here of course I mean this probably won't he probably won't see too much of this in the slot if he is playing in the slot in the NFL but you know instances where he's like guarding a wheel route or something like that coming out of the slot um um, he will have instances where he has to guard some deeper routes, and this is a it's a good route. I mean, he acts like he's going inside. Darnay bites right there, kind of gets pushed off balance as well, and then the receiver just, you know, basically runs a straight line, and it's an easy touchdown. So I kind of wish Darnay right here was just a bit more handsy at first within the first five yards. Once again, I don't know what the exact, exact college rule is, but I'm pretty sure um, college football is more lenient with uh, defensive players, you know, cornerbacks specifically being a bit more handsy, so I'm sure that would have been fine. 
gets blown off the spot right there, kind of anticipates him going inside, and it did not work. And the recovery was not good enough. I actually looked it up. His 40 time was 448, I believe, but there's also a video from 2016 of him running like a 43240. So let's just say it's somewhere between 432 and 448. Um, that sounds pretty good to me and is pretty fast, or actually very fast, I should say. So that's a good sign. But for this particular play, I mean, once again, it is outside, so I don't think this is what he's going to do in the NFL, but uh, he did not do it good job on this play. UCLA is in zone defense here, and I absolutely love what Darnay Holmes does. He's on the bottom of the screen, I believe, and uh, just meets the, the receiver at the perfect time. And you can't hit him too early, but he knocks his pass free. It was a great job. I mean, I saw Xavier McKinney make a very similar play to this. It was on a running back on like one of those angle routes where like the running back went like out and in and McKinney met him, you know, the exact time the ball got there. I think it might have been an interception on that play too, but Darnell Holmes does a great job here of meeting him at the right time and knocking this pass away. Did he get there a bit early? You can make the argument. Luckily, the ref's head was not turned around. I don't think that's his job anyway, but um, yeah, so maybe he got there a bit early, but I love that. The anticipation right there and knocking that ball away, I think is tremendous and you know that is basically a, a route concept that a slot cornerback would have to cover right there you know you're going to see a lot of slants and stuff like that of course it's harder to guard a slant um when you're closer to uh, where the ball is snapped it's just you know i guess it's physics i guess you can call it but um you know even on the outside for a cornerback it's tough to guard a slant i know he's in zone defense here and you know, he could have just stayed around here because that was his assignment technically, but he saw the quarterback's eyes go towards this receiver here and he just made a jump on that ball, made the right decision, and was able to knock it away. So we get a special visit from Gardner Minshew here on top of the left, but disregard that. Uh, it looks like UCLA was in man coverage here because there is no safety, so I'm assuming this has to be man coverage. And Darnay's playing some, you know, very off coverage about 10 yards away from his receiver here. I kind of wish he broke on this route a bit earlier, but in, at the end it was incomplete. I guess maybe the throw was a bit, you know, bit of a outside, I guess, or a bit past the outstretched arms of the receiver. But, you know, Darnay definitely would have given up a first down here. I kind of wish, you know, at this point, he's really staring him down the whole time. If you look at you know, Gordon's eyes, he's basically looking at this side of the field, and he's the only receiver on this side of the field. So I kind of wish Darnay um, you know, took advantage of that and kind of jumped the route. I mean, we've seen pick sixes on routes like this many times. The throw was away from the cornerback and outside towards the sideline, which is definitely a good throw by the cornerback, a bit too far, actually. But, um, you know, this definitely could have been a first down given up, so it's it's not the worst thing in the world. But, uh, you know, the, the coverage is pretty soft. I, I guess that's the way they were um, supposed to play this. But, you know, you see the top cornerback as well was also in pretty soft coverage there. So it is a second and ten. It did fall incomplete. I just kind of wish he jumped this route a bit earlier. Earlier, but uh, it is what it is. It wasn't complete anyway. So they look to be in uh, in man coverage once again because there is no safety back. Uh, a lot of guys on the line of scrimmage here for UCLA. I forget if they rush these guys or send them back. Yeah, they do rush most. No, no, they actually sent them back. Okay, fooled me. But um, so yeah, Darnay probably should have given up a you know ten yard curl pass here. But sometimes things just go your way, and <laughs> as you can see, the ball literally just fell into his hands for an interception. Good reaction right there by Holmes. I mean, yeah, it's, this this definitely should have been completion for a first down on a third and ten play. And as I mentioned earlier, the guy had an ankle injury, so I'm assuming it's very tough to cut like this. Actually, you can kind of see on the tail ends here. Um, so Darnay's head is focused on the quarterback right now. He has no idea where his guy is, which is kind of not a good thing, I would say. You probably would rather have Darnay have like a hand on his guy to at least know where he's at. I think Darnay's worried about not getting beat deep. And once the quarterback releases it, you see here, Darnay's almost out of the picture. Receiver's turning his head. Gordon's loading the throw. And by the time, you know, he even realizes, I mean, you know, it was too late for him. But luckily for Holmes, it fell into his hands. So it'll go down in the stat sheet as an interception, which is, you know, why you can't just look at the stats. But, uh, you know, he was beat on this route technically, but it was an interception. So that's how we'll look at it in the stat sheet. So this pass didn't go in Darnay's direction, but it's something I wanted to point out. So I guess out of the bunch up here, I think this top receiver just runs an in right here, and he makes the catch. But Darnay had very a very tough time shedding the block. He actually did a good job right here of reacting to this route. If you watch the bottom of the screen, does a good job of cutting him off inside. Good job with the left arm extended within five yards, then turns around. So that was great coverage by him. I don't even think Gordon's looking on that side of the field anyway, so that doesn't matter. But, you know, that is good coverage. Hits him in stride there. 
you know, doesn't really wrap up his tackle, gets by one guy, and Darnay is here on the bottom of the screen. And honestly, Darnay should have been in a position to make this tackle at around, you know, the 40 or 45 yard line of Washington State. But unfortunately, was it Washington State? No, this was UCLA's 45 yard line. All right, even worse. So he was not able to break this block and, and shed this block, which is a bit concerning to me. I don't know how great of a blocker this receiver is, but he had problems with it. Receiver picked up like an extra. 25 30 yards on this play so that was a bit concerning for me because you know you'd have to imagine Darnay at this point is probably somewhere a bit beyond the play maybe 5 10 yards down the field of course we don't get the best camera angles here we can't see everything but um you know he should know by I guess at least probably around this point that the ball's in this guy's hands and that he can uh, you know go off and make the tackle but he just cannot break the block on the bottom of the screen as you can see so that was a bit concerning for me I do think maybe the injury had part of the reason to do with that um, you know so it is what it is I mean I hope that's just an injury thing and hopefully that's that's not a concern in the NFL I didn't even realize it when putting this together but Darnay had some good redemption for me criticizing him on the last play for not being able to shed that block this is a screen pass here I guess to the top receiver I think he comes in and tries to catch this pass. Yes, yeah, so, you know, top receiver pushes off there, gets his separation, comes back in. His two inside receivers are blocking for him. But Darnay Holmes up here did a really good job on this play of breaking containment of that block and making a great play. This just showed great tenacity and not giving up on the play. Of course, his teammates are there to wrap him up, but I think Darnay Holmes was one of the main reasons this play happened. If he did not shed this block, then I think the receiver you know, probably could have caught this ball and kind of turned upfield here and probably had to beat just one guy rather than, the, uh, rather than the entire defense. So I think Darnay did a good job of changing his direction and, of course, shedding his block uh, from this guy right here. So I love seeing that. That is a great play right there, a great hustle, great tenacity, and all that good stuff. So we saw a route like this earlier when Darnay was on the bottom of the screen and Washington was going the other way, and the pass was incomplete because Gordon threw it a bit too far outside. This time, unfortunately, it will go down as a touchdown against Darnay Holmes, who's on the top of the screen here, and he was in a tough spot. He's already six yards off his receiver. I believe it is man coverage, and it's just a quick you know, out pass and just an easy touchdown for Washington State. And that's a tough position for Darnay to be in because you have to guard against you know, an out route or a slant. If, if he decided to go inside here, there's, I know he has some help here, but there's enough room right here to make this throw. I do think, if I'm reading this correctly, that um, this running back was guarded by him. So I, I don't think this was help for Darnay Holmes You know, in, in case the slant route was happening. So I guess in a perfect world, he could have tried to push him inside more because he did have help from you know this guy here. But as I said, at the same time, the slant route would have been open. So unfortunately, he does go with the out route, and Darnay Holmes is a little late reacting to it. Um, he kind of like opens his hips up. A bit too wide I guess you can say like right there he kind of takes that like wide step and I kind of wish he went towards the receiver more you know it's, it's a first and goal play you might as well go all out you know if if you jump on a route that's awesome it's a pick six and if you don't then who cares they score a touchdown like that might not be the right philosophy for me but at the same time you're down 42 17 you might as well just try and jump this and get a pick six if you know what I mean so um, I wouldn't say do that in a tie ball game but you know in a situation like this maybe try to jump it get a pick six and, and get this game going in the right direction but for Holmes he was in a tough spot on this play I, I guess the out routes were giving him trouble in this game once again I don't know how much the injury was hindering him on plays like this but uh he could have done a little better on this play so this is the last play we have here and this was basically a mirror image of something we saw before I think they were going the same way as well they're around the same part of the field it was the same route concept where the receiver acts like he was going to go inside then kind of just you know uses that swim move to go out outside and just basically fools Darnay Holmes so you see him once again just basically anticipate that route going inside he got beat outside once again this time he tried to make the tackle but uh, I don't know what the flag was for I see the um I guess it was a face mask maybe yeah it looks like a face mask that kind of probably was it um but yeah, you see him basically, Holmes right here, bites inside once again, right there. He takes a, a wrong step, 
Receiver beats him towards the outside, and you know he had a yard or two of separation. Another good throw in the um, you know stretched out arms of the receiver. So it is a great throw and a good route ran. But at the end of the day, I mean this is the second time it happened in the game, so that is a bit concerning. I feel like if it happens once to you, uh, you should probably know in the back of your mind that it could happen again. So I do wish he w- I do wish that he learned from that, but unfortunately that was not the case. So at the end of the day, there are a lot of things to like. I like the anticipation a lot. I like the fact that he knew a lot of route concepts and as i said in, um you know previous as i said previously he did route, run some routes for people and it turned into interceptions or some just plays made on the ball that went very well for him so there are good things about him of course his speed and recovery as well i liked his tackling for the most part there was that one play where he missed a tackle but that was a tough one to make so um so yeah, overall, I was pretty impressed. I, I do know the guy was playing injured in this game, and they are playing against a, a pretty good quarterback, a guy that I did call a poor man's Drew Locke, which I guess isn't the best praise, but it's also not terrible either. So, um, you know, it, it could have been better, of course, but overall, I'm, I'm pretty impressed, and uh, I'm very excited for this kid's future for the Giants. He does have that prototypical slot build um, for the NFL. I do not really expect to see him outside too much. I, I guess it could happen if injuries were to occur and stuff like that, but that would not be ideal. I do think he has a a bright future as a slot corner in the NFL, and that is a very important position nowadays for the NFL. So that'd be a a very beneficial thing for the Giants if Darnay Holmes turned out to be a great pick. So I hope you got hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you next time.